On this slide, we talk about OPND and OXG. So these are to be thought of as graded modules which are shifted. Shifted in the sense you multiply them by homogeneous polynomial of degree D. Now here this X is nothing but a projective variety and it comes equipped with an embedding into the space Pn. Now the advantage of these sheaves is that their global sections are easy to describe. So the global sections here are nothing but homogeneous polynomials of degree D. We will come to this later also to completely describe it. So again you achieve these sheaves by multiplying by degree D polynomials. So let us give a proper definition now. So we start with the graded ring. You fix R as a graded ring. Uh, natural grading in terms of always you can think of graded ring with the crutch of homogeneous polynomials graded according to the degree. And then you fix this M as a graded R module. Now we want to define this MD. Now MD is also a graded module. It's precisely same as M but the grading is shifted. Yeah, So the nth part of MDN is same as the D plus N part of M. So MDN part is same as M D plus N part. Again uh, we are using homogeneous polynomials. So you think multiplying. Yeah, you, you take say Xn which lies in the nth part. Yeah, it lies in Mn. You multiply it with Xd which lies in Md and you end up in D plus N part which is Xn plus D. Yeah, so D plus N part here or N plus D part here is same as Mdn. So this is the idea. Yeah, in fact, this is what is required. Just keep this in mind. So an important remark is that the shift operation does not alter exactness of exact sequence of modules. So if you have exact sequence of modules and you apply the shift operator, this exact sequence does not lose its exactness. Yeah, Image is equal to kernel before and image is equal to kernel after shifting because shifting doesn't do much. So definition, you fix X as a projective algebraic variety and uh, it comes with an embedding. That is an equation which describes the way X sits in Pn. So you have an associated ring R which is OX plus sign is for homogeneous polynomials to indicate that we are working in projective space. Again it is standard grading by homogeneous polynomials and we have described this OX plus many times. You take whatever projective space you are sitting on modulo out by the homogeneous polynomial equation of x and whatever you get is a bunch of homogeneous polynomials which are part of a graded ring arranged by degree. So shifted module Rd so you obviously have R as a graded ring so OXG is nothing but a sheaf which is associated with the shifted module Rd. So Ox of D we will write it as Rd or R subscript D with the tilde sign. Yeah, this tilde sign means you are able to sheafify it on open sets. So if you have a sheaf F which is a Ox module you can also define f of d which is nothing but the tensor product yeah so you will obviously have f of u and then you tensor it with ox of t now just again to recall this tilde sign is nothing but it means you are able to define sections on open sets that is you are able to do some localization and doing some localization often is application of a tensor product. 
Now we want to concretely define the sections of OXD. So what are the sections of OXD? Now we know from before if you, had, if you did not have any of the shifting that is multiplication by D, we had degree zero fractions. Yeah, So we had something like F over G where degree of F is degree of G. That is degree of numerator is equal to degree of denominator. So this we have seen before. Now OXD also has fractions. So OXD over set UF also has sections and which look like fractions only. So they are of the form say A over FR but degree of A minus R times degree of F is D. That is degree of numerator minus degree of denominator is D. So from 0 you have shifted by D and that is precisely why the definition everything was written because we want to get to here. So standard open sets are we will write down standard of open sets in a bit but I just want to describe again u of f f is some homogeneous polynomial equal to 0 and then u of f is you just take the four places out where f is 0 so u of f is precisely where f is non-zero so now coming back to standard open sets of the projective space so they are uh, there are obviously n plus 1 standard open sets in Pn corresponding to x0 is not 0, x1 is not 0, x2 is not 0, xi is not 0 and xn is not 0. So we want to describe sections on these standard open sets. So you could have standard open sets defined by any homogeneous polynomials but also these standard open sets. So again it, it has to be a fraction so I'm just going to replace f by xi so f is not equal to 0 is equivalent to now f equals to xi xi not equals to 0 so degree of a minus r has to be d because xi has just degree 1 so uh, denominator degree is r so degree of numerator minus degree of denominator is d or degree of a is r plus d so you, now you can see the shift clearly yeah, so this is the shift because without writing OXD, yeah, so, so this is the shift basically. Yeah, if you just had OX, then obviously the degree of numerator has to be equal to degree of denominator. So in this case, a degree of A is equal to N, yeah, because this fraction is of degree 0. So degree of numerator is equal to degree of denominator. On this slide, we talk about uh, global sections. Yeah, so global sections on the projective space. And this is given on page 58 of Daniel Perrin's book, Algebraic Geometry. So you first start with the graded ring and uh, this dth part Rd is the vector space of homogeneous polynomials of degree D. So Rd is nothing but the vector space of homogeneous polynomials of degree D. in these variables x0, x1, x2, x3 all the way to xn. Obviously we are working in projective space and this is the standard way we have defined the grading on the ring and this is by degree. So what are the global sections? So the global sections that is on the entire space we know on open sets we had fractions but on the entire space if d is less than 0 it is just 0 and it is just rd if d is greater or equal to 0 yeah so in particular when d is 0 that is just for opn the global sections are 
constant. So for d equals to 0, we have to show this global section is just a constant because r0 will consist of homogeneous polynomials of degree 0, that is just the constants. Okay, now start with the proof. So first fix f a non-zero element. Yeah, so non-zero element of the global section. So we have to show f is nothing but a homogeneous polynomial. Yeah, of some degree d. So if you restrict it to open set, say u x i, obviously p n p n has these standard open sets x zero, x one, all the way to x n. So here it looks like a fraction. Yeah, this we have seen before. So we have um, some some polynomial, a homogeneous polynomial p i in the numerator, and we have this x i, say raised to the power r in the denominator. So uh, degree of p i is d plus r. So the total degree of the fraction is d. So degree of p i is d plus r. And uh, we have simplified this expression so that x i does not divide p i. So we assume this that x i will not divide p i. Now similarly you can talk about open set u x j. On that we will have this polynomial pj divided by xj and now we will say xj to the power of s. Here again degree of pj is d plus s so that the fraction has degree d since we are working in op and d and similarly we assume xj does not divide pj. So we have simplified it enough so that they don't divide each other. So now we work on the intersection of these two sets u x i intersection with u x j so you can write that that as u x i x j so these two polynomials will be equal because both these polynomials are nothing but restriction of the same function f to open sets x i and x j so again it is a restriction of the same function f to open sets u x i and u x j clear the denominators now notice that xi does not divide pi, xj, xj does not divide pj. So the only way it can hold is if r and s are both 0. Yeah, again you can spend a moment to think about it because you cannot cancel anything from either side and you have this big term of xi on one side and xj on other side and to force the equality to hold you have to make them r equals to s as 0. So pi is equal to pj both of degree d. If d is 0 then obviously pi and pj have degree 0 and that means they are constants. So in particular we have shown. So now we want to talk about what is the total number of homogeneous polynomials of degree d in n plus 1 variables. So these n plus 1 variables are x0, x1, x2, x3 all the way to xn. So this has a combinatorial answer n plus d choose n so, uh, so thus the dimension of the global space is precisely these uh, homogeneous polynomials. So let us give an example. say n is 2 and d is 3. So n is 2 is x0, x1, x2 we have and degree has to be 3. So we will have n plus d choose n that is 5 choose 2 which is 10. So let us write down all the degree 3 possible monomials which will finally generate the homogeneous polynomials of degree 3. So this is the basis. Yeah, so this is the basis. So notice that the dimension is finite. So when I say number of homogeneous polynomials of degree d, basically the first line of the right hand side 
means homogeneous monomials yeah because those monomials will generate the entire uh, homogeneous polynomials again another example n is 2 and d is 2 so obviously now we have to talk about degree 2 so again n is 2 so we are talking about three variables x0 x1 and x2 and uh, the following enumerated are the degree 2 polynomials or monomials which will generate the entire set of degree 2 homogeneous polynomials.